The Bowflex PR1000 Home Gym. Power rod type uh, system for resistance training and things like that. Uh, as of the recording of this, that is the least expensive model the Bowflex currently sells. As you can see, it's all set up here, but uh, this is a uh, second day with machine. We got it yesterday, set it up yesterday evening. This video will be back in time and we'll do the, the unboxing and the put together of the machine, assembling the whole thing. There'll be chapters if you need to skip ahead to certain parts to see if you're stuck when you're assembling your own, things like that. Tips and tricks along the way that I found that worked for me. And then uh, at the end, We'll do a quick little piece on some of the things I'm not quite sold on and some of the benefits of the machine, things like that, because there, uh, there are definitely benefits for this guy. So, yeah, uh, stick around for the video. Instructions right on the top, and a bunch of pieces. Alrighty, so let's start with those instructions. So the PR1000, uh, safety warnings of course, safety instructions, safety warning and serial number so that you can track that stuff here, write it down. Once I get it all opened and done, I'll do that. Dimensions right there. I uh, need 80 inches wide, 82 inches high, and 82 inches long. So 7 feet high, 7 feet long, and just about 7 feet wide is what you need. So but this is where I'm going to set it up to start with. It's just essentially right here that uh, my, my dip bar um, station is going to have to move there probably. All right, all the components, everything that's supposed to be here. All right, so starting with the different pieces, it looks like starting with the back, moving forward. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm recording on the handy dandy GoPro. Still recording? Hello. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to essentially do the unboxing on the GoPro. Um, and I'll kind of drop back into real time instead of like a, a high speed or kind of fast forward here. Uh, once uh, or when I see anything weird or interesting, but... Here's the feet, so this part with the ridges, that goes on the floor, that makes sense too because this plate then goes on the floor. Okay, so we've got the base here, taking everything out of the box, and I've got this upright piece right there. Which is what it shows here, so I need two Ds a B which is a washer and then another B washer for the other side and one of the locking nuts C. I needed two D's and then four B's and um, two C's. So everything is labeled, everything's where it is. So there's only two D's so it's the two, the, the only time you'll need that particular size. The washers are standard across everything and essentially so are the uh, bolts, the C's. So there are a few other different size washers as well that'll be for other pieces, but we'll get to those. All right, so I've got the two bolts through there uh, on the base here. Uh, so this upright and the actual base, I've got the two bolts uh, with the washers and the locking nuts. Now I haven't tightened those yet. I'll have to do that right away. Now one thing for that, this is why they give you two of the little wrench type tools is because with the locking nuts, you need to kind of hold it with one and tighten with the other at the same time, so I'll do that next. 
Yeah, so one thing I'll point out, there are two of the wrench type tools. Uh, one of them comes with a hex key, the other one's got a Phillips head on it. These will work, so I mean, it comes with the tools that you need. The trick would be is if you have a couple good uh, crescent wrenches or something like that, it's going to make your uh, world a lot easier to do these. So I've got some wrenches of my own. What I'll do is I'll do the first one with those guys just to kind of sh show maybe how to do it with them. And then from there, I'll go to my uh, my own tools that uh, are just going to be a little easier to handle, frankly. It's going to be one to hold. There, just kind of snaps on. Like that. And then I'll do one on the bolt head. And it'll just be tightening from there. Now. So that works. It's really not taking that long to do. Just a little fiddly. But if you've got uh, something with a little bit of ratcheting, that's going to make very short work of this. Now, I do you want to make sure I've got that? There's a hole up top here. I want to make sure that's usable because there'll be something that'll bolt into that later. So those work. I suspect this is going to work a lot faster. This one tightened as well. Okay, I misread that. So I was concerned about those top bolts and what was going to happen with them. Well, that is what the A and B are for. If you look at that diagram, it almost looks like it's pointing at um, this cross piece right here, but it's not. You have to see the one on the other side that kind of comes down and goes into the base. So that is these two holes, one on either side. Step two is going to be essentially uh, getting the uh, seat uh, onto the uh, onto the bench, or into the bench crossbar piece. So I'm going to need four E's and F's, the seat, and that that little piece there, which I got to find it. It's in one of the bags. Okay, so I've got the, the seat part here. I'll turn it around once I get to the right spot. But um, yeah, uh, what you've got here, it's four holes, which is where those bolts will go. There's also a peg right here. If we look at the seat, there's three holes on one side, two on the other. And if you look real close, I don't know if the camera can get in there, you can see a metal insert in there for threading. That's where the bolts will go. And then this one here, that open hole, We'll go on that peg. I'm going to put that on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over. And that's how I'll put the bolts in. So I'm just going to have to put it down, hold it, and put the bolts in on the other side. Okay, so as I said, I put the, the one peg in that's going to keep it in the right spot. And then flipped it all over and realigned the screw holes. Because, of course, all it's doing is sitting on a pivot point. So you got to... I'll kind of realign it. But now that i got it realigned, I'm going to put the four bolts in. They are the E's with the F washers. And I'll just go put those in. Okay, so for this section, we need this bar right here. You can see the feet part on the bottom there. Two, two straight through holes. And then also this piece here. You can see it's got a pulley on there. Just leave that bag for now, apparently, according to the instructions. And you've got that there. Um, that will actually clamp onto that other bar. And then you've got the silver piece. Trying to get back a little bit further. GoPro might give a better angle for this. But yeah, so I'm just gonna get the bolts for that and put that. So with the way this is shown, you see you've got the, the gray or silver piece. So yeah, a silver piece, and then the black piece. 
This goes in there with that part down and the bolt go through with the head of the bolt on this side by the silver. So I'll do that. Yeah, so the next step, now that I've got that on there, bolted through, it now needs to get connected over here on the whole bench rail. So I'm going to grab my two H's, two B's, two more, and, uh, so that's interesting. Okay, and one more B and one C. So only one of the two that we're gonna put in will you bolt on the other side. The other one will go in here, and yeah, you can see it's threaded. So it'll actually bolt right in there. They've pre-built something in this rail. So let's get my, my H and my B's and my 1C and go from there. Okay, so the funny thing is it shows it going around the silver and uh, into the back black part that goes into the silver rail. Now the funny thing about that is you can't get the bolts to the bend, of course, so you do have to lift the silver part so you can get the bolts. So there's a pulley there, and you gotta watch those cables, but it does bend enough that I can get that, that bolt in. Top one will go into there. Move this bench again. Like that. Gotta go through there. And this is the one that should line up with, yeah, this one lines up with a bolt or a nut that's pre-drilled into this rail. Go in here, but it should come all the way through, which it does. Washer and the locking nut. Tighten that. And then, yeah, I just now need to tighten that all down. Step five, we're going to now start putting the, the bench rail to the upright. Now to do that, we've got uh, on here, there's these two kind of tie wrapped plugs. They'll go into these holes where they're tie wrapped. And I need an I and a B and then a B and a C just to kind of snag that together. Now, presumably, yeah, that uh, that bolt I will go through that plugged hole. So it's kind of neat. These are metal. These are little plugs that go in there, but they they just fall out, right? They're not they're not magnets or nothing like that. But they will need to be kind of in there when we mount this thing through there. It'll act as essentially the uh, what the uh, the the bench rides on when it gets uh, uh, put upright. What I've done is I've gotten those two washers in on both sides, and I just kind of slide this forward. This is one of those definitely places where having two people would be good, but this seems to be not bad. Now I just need to line it and get my eye with a washer through the whole thing. Okay, to do that, to get the first one, I had to lift a little bit. You can see it's tilted because I lifted the one side. Now I gotta lift the other side so I can get the bolt to push all the way through. Okay, that took some playing. I got it through though. That's uh, good that it's through. Definitely takes some playing, some lifting, because it doesn't just sit on the floor and do it. You gotta do some lifting. Uh, but once you get it, it's pretty straightforward. Confirming I've got both of the little metal pieces there. Now I just need to put my washer and my bolt on there and tighten it down. Okay, and then the last step for step five is to put this bolt in there. So we'll, there, this guy goes in there. The idea is you tighten that down and you can't lift the bench. Because that is the one thing about the, this one is the PR1000 is that you can basically lift the bench up when you're done your workout and uh, basically get a little bit of space back. So yeah, okay, on to step six. 
And we're now starting to work on the top bar with the pulleys and things like that. I need this, then I gotta put the crossbar on it. Now there are two crossbars with double pulleys. I gotta figure out which one I need and how, how it determines it. Uh, I'm suspecting, ah, there we go. Okay, that's what I need to know. It's got bow flex on it. That's the bow flex one. So the smaller of the two is the next step. Okay, and that's just gonna go right there on that. I'll have to get those aligned and put my bolts and nuts in. These ones are H's with B's and C's. Okay, so yeah, the bolts will just go through there. I haven't tightened them down yet, but they'll go through there with the heads at what um, will be the bottom of this bar. Um, basically, that means you don't have a chunk of bolt sitting out, maybe scraping your head on. Those, those extra pieces go to the top. Slight safety feature. Okay, it's not super obvious, but one of the next steps is to put these pieces on this top um, rail part. That's these guys, they're orange. They're tablet holder and essentially they look identical. But what you do is you can see if this is the bottom going up the rail, the, it'll sit on there. And then at the top of it, you go like that to kind of compress it down. So you just put them in opposite and slide them up from the looks of it. And then once I get that done, I will put it on that guy right there and bolt it in. Okay, so this is the bottom. And I've got, so if I look at this, that's gonna be at the top. This is the bottom. First piece I do, it's gotta be like that. Slide it in. It goes on easy for the first chunk, but that doesn't stay there. It has to go up further. So you just gotta manhandle it a little bit, slide it up. There we go, so I've done that with the other one, the opposite direction. And again, manhandle it up. And the idea being, depending on your tablet size or whatever, uh, you can slide those up and down to get it at the right height and the right dimensions for your tablet. So that's one thing. So you need seven feet height. i am got more than seven feet ceiling height here. Uh, the problem is you need that much more at least to get this part on. So I am bumping the roof, so I have to do a little bit of playing here and uh, I'll kind of basically tilt the base, slide this on and then stand it up right. Okay, we've got that on there. I mean, obviously I'm too close to this uh, little bulkhead here, but we will move it further over once we uh, have it together. Um, and this may or may not be the permanent location for it. It's just a spot. Okay, so got it together. Basically just had to lift that up and angle in that piece. Um, that's good. I need to put the bolts in here yet. So the six bolts and washers, I'll do that right now. It's super visible here or not, but you can see a lip right here as it, where they've got it together. So I haven't got it fully tightened yet. So I'll just have to be careful as I tighten it that I get that lined up properly. 25 they're called times one. I think I saw that. That's that guy. And there's a spot for it to go. And it's just 3M tape. Yeah, so just a little bit below that sticker. Just gonna try and get it even and stick it on there next step is step nine which is going to be mounting the power rods to the base here at the back so what do i need three j's with k washers and two l's with k washers there's also a bracket that goes in okay so these are the screws that go underneath um 
They've got a hex key on them, but those are the ones that'll go into the plastic. They're just a different kind of a screw, so it'll allow it to plastic, you know, cut into the plastic instead of the bolts for the metal. But we'll get those on with washers. So you can see there's a bit of a groove there. Go back and forth a little bit. Adjustable. But let's see if I can get these screwed in. Okay, I got the first one going in, and I'll just uh, kind of go along and then tighten them. Okay, so the back plate on that goes in underneath the metal piece right here. Slides in like that. All things considered, I probably shouldn't have tightened down those bottom screws first, uh, just to allow a little bit more flexibility. So I'll loosen those and then put these bolts in here. The bolts in here are... Uh, uh, not going to be really good. There we go. They're Phillips. Okay, next step is the other uh, bar with pulleys and also getting the bars and pieces on the, uh, the lake extension piece. So we'll start with that bottom pulley set. I'm going to need a couple M's, a couple B's, and that's showing where they need to go. Okay, so this guy. Pulleys at the top, those there, Pulleys on the back here, above the seat, right there. And that lines up there, and the really long bolts go all the way through, and then they do have a nut on the other side. Okay, those are in and locked. Next step is the bars with the stuff for the feet and the legs. So these guys, there's four of them. And these will be the bars for them. Okay, another thing to watch for is the two bars are not the same length. The longer one should go on the top. How that showed itself is that uh, I ended up having way too much gap down here with the long bar at the bottom there, which should have been the short one. And here where I had the short one, I had trouble getting the end cap on. So there's that. There's also here down in this part, there are two holes you could use. Either one will work. From the looks of it, um, it just, depending on your leg length, which will work better for you for different exercises. Okay, so that's that part. That is step 10 done. Step 11 is now to put the uh, seat back on the bench. So pull that right to the front. There's a lever. I assume I will lock that in place. Yeah, so what we want to do is push it right into here, make sure lower it down onto the belt. Uh, onto the, yeah, onto the bench, onto the bar. All right, so at the end of the bench, there's that. Not the side that says bow flex, the other side, and it'll click into there, or push down in there, and then we'll lower it down. So it just pushes in, there's no click or nothing, it just pushes in, because you can pop this right back off, and that is one thing you can do with this thing too, is um, there, in that bag there, is a kind of a back strap, and you can do, um, aerobic rowing on this machine. So uh, that's just there like that right now. Just kind of sits on there. Uh, you can actually sit it up at different positions and things like that, but we'll get into that later. And then there's this little clip down here. If I... Okay, it's not rolling to where I need it to be. There we go. And take a little bit of effort to get it right to the back. I've got it clipped down. And that rests just kind of on that crossbar. So you've got a nice strong bench to sit on. You can pull that and pull it back and clip it in right there. Give you a seated bench uh, for more upright exercises. Okay, so now it says final inspection. Inspect your machine, make sure everything's tight uh, and unwrap the cables without crimping them at this point. And then the next step will be um, to level the machine, there's a few different ways I can level by moving that up and down and around because right now it, eh, it has a little wobble, but it's not bad. But yeah, you can uh, basically loosen this and kind of move that plate around. It looks like there's some adjustment there. You can do that on all four sides. And then once you've got it leveled, then we can start putting the cables together. So let's uh, get this in spot and look at my next step. The key to all of it, 
are these bottom pulleys. So they each have this clip at one end and a carabiner at the other end. Carabiner will go to either the top cable for these guys up here or to those bottom cables for the leg piece. Okay, so let's release the bars for the first time. Maybe. And that fell down there. I'll recover that after. So they're staying up pretty nice right here at the beginning. Um, this is the place to start. I will just want to make it work. I'm going to go with the smallest one. So yeah. Obviously my dip bar needs to move. Okay, so let's set up the same one on the other side just as a test. Straps out here. A couple straps here. And these will clip onto the carabiners. So yeah, um, pretty good. You can do a tricep extension pretty solidly. That's pretty good. And that's, doesn't really feel like that much weight. Let's just wanna see what a single of the biggest bar feels like. strength behind it that's for darn sure so that's good so that is one thing I was concerned about with these uh, things was that it was going to not give me enough even with the full weight set on it, it wasn't going to give me enough resistance but that is telling me that it will um, so that's great that gives me hope that I can do some good stuff so yeah giving it a test here um, that's pretty good it works very well uh, from what I can see so far, I'm going to have to do some more thorough testing. Seems to be pretty solid. I'll have to try all the different pieces, give myself some good tests tonight to see what I can do with it. for is this this is sliding around pretty good on this mat so definitely want to make sure you're when you're trying to pull any of the resistance that you've got your weight on it otherwise it's going to move around on you yeah 
to do a little playing, get this all sorted out, figured out, but uh, looking good. Okay, so some things about the PR1000 uh, home gym here. It is uh, 210 pounds of power rod is what they, they call it. It doesn't, it's not a true equate pound for pound for these versus say if you're using dumbbells or real weight. Um, playing with it, it's not bad. It's also brand new. I'm finding good resistance out of the stuff. It doesn't quite equate to true, true weights, but um, it, uh, yeah, let's say they, they overestimate the pull on some of these at certain times. The interesting thing as you get uh, further in an exercise, as the bar gets more bent, you do get more resistance so that uh, you can, maybe that's where they're kind of equating it to is right at the last little push. Uh, yeah, this is the the power rod stack here. Uh, the rods are replace, replaceable if necessary. They sell them from uh, from Bowflex. Um, the the inexpensive one or the least expensive one here, the PR one thousand, um, does not have the ability to add additional weight bars. Um, the other sets do. The other machines do uh, in the lineup, and. Um, it's interesting that they've reused some of the parts in this machine, but they have set it up in such a way that you can't use them to add extra weight. So what I mean by that is, if you look here, you see the power rods go down to these holes. There's these two plugs here that are basically the size of what these 50, 50 rods would be. And I forgot to uh, pull some plastic on there. Uh, <laughs> forgot to do an unpeel. Do that after. Um, but yeah, so they should go, you should be able to put some in here. And then the other machines you can. You can add just two extra 50s. You can also add an attachment here on the end. There's a spot to slot in two uh, or uh, an additional set of weights, things like that. It's just an extra block of plastic with weights um, basically screwed into it uh, or the power rod screwed into it. Uh, but just the way they have built this, they basically blocked off the ability to do that. So somebody enterprising with metalwork uh, could probably find a way around that pretty uh, straightforward wise, but um, Right now, I'm not going to worry about that because this is going to give me enough resistance for now. Going over to a leg attachment and where the this is. So yeah, um, there are two spots where you can latch in the seat with this red piece here. So of course, you would pull that and move the seat up. The other spot is up here about halfway, which will give you a seated position. And what you can also do is pull this out and turn it, and then it's a free, a free glide, and that's what you'll use when you're uh, just kind of moving around, um, so that it doesn't catch anywhere. Now the only issue I found with this is that, and I can kind of see why they would have done it for the re free rowing, so you didn't go too far back, is there is a pad right there where it rests when it locks. If you can see that, it's. Just because it's new, there's a little bit of extra resistance there, and you have to use a bit of force to push this back. And if you're not realizing you need to use the force because it rolls so easily on the rest of the track, uh, you may not think you can actually get it to the back, or you may think you have it, but it's not locked down, things like that. So that's something to watch for. Um, but yeah, uh, moving it up to the seat is fairly easy, uh, to the upright position, so that's, that's good. Um, Lots of things, the, the main core of the PR1000, some of the more expensive machines you can hop from lower to legs to upper uh, all over and changing exercises on the fly um, just by grabbing and going. Uh, with this, you do have to move some cables around if you want to use the top or the middle or the legs. Uh, and it all hinges on uh, these pulleys on this center bar. Now you can use, right now I've got straps right there so you can use that for a whole whack of center um, weights for you can do that for bicep curls you can do it for for chest workouts uh, triceps rowing stuff all that kind of stuff there and there is a, a rowing belt there for that uh, cardio rowing uh, but if you want to use the top rack or the top set of pulleys you basically got to take this carabiner and uh, that that carabiner is where you'll move that strap from your grips you'll move your grip up to here and the carabiner down here on the lower pulley will go into this part of the cable so then when you pull down here it'll pull that ca cable 
down below. So watch, just watch for these cables as you're moving around. So basically those work together. You use the top one, you work with the middle. Same thing with the legs. The legs, you can see down there, there's a splitter cable that comes off. It's got two ends. One goes to either pulley on either side. Then to actually change your resistance, um, the middle pulleys, like I said, it's the core. It's the only cable that actually attaches to the power rods. And it's got this special clip and you can do multiple power rods, things like that. It's, um, you just bend the power rod down to where you can actually reach it with this and then you just clip it in. Sometimes these look like they'll be in the wrong spot. You can just kind of twist them uh, to get them so they line up really nicely. So those are just a couple of tricks I found that weren't necessarily extremely obvious or just little weird things. Okay, so for the, the PR1000, what are my thoughts? Um, just kind of went over a couple of things that I thought were interesting to watch for. Um, I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of the way the seat works, but I understand why they did it. Uh, and it, it does work well. It's the switching of the pulleys to do the different exercises. Maybe a little inconvenient compared to the other ones, but it's certainly way less convenient than, you know, trying to wait to, at the gym for a machine to get freed up or uh, to slip in between somebody else's sets, that kind of thing. So convenience is still there, just not quite as convenient as the more expensive units, but it is a lot less expensive. So that was good. Overall, I'm liking it. I've only tried a few things so far. Like I said, I only put it together last night and uh, yeah, I was pretty tired from a lot of snow shoveling yesterday. So I didn't get a chance to really use it. And uh, even this morning, I haven't done too much with it yet, but I have been playing with it and I'm finding the resistance is solid. I love how smooth it is. The pulleys are good, the way the rods pull, that's all fantastic. It's nice because you're getting the resistance training, but different than if you're using weight, you're not getting, um, you're not dealing with momentum of mass. So you're not, you seem less likely to hurt yourself. You can still pull things, you can still do your exercise wrong and hurt yourself, all that kind of stuff, but you're not, fighting that oh if i drop this i'm going to really hurt myself you're not you're not dealing with that piece so that's good from a safety aspect it seems pretty good now i just need to kind of start working through it on convenient exercises and short sets where maybe i'm going to do my upper body but i'm going to do it all with the lower pulley set so i don't i can run through my sets without having to change anything then maybe the next day i'll use just exercises from the upper pulley and then the last day, maybe I'll only just do legs and I'll do some rotating. So I got to build up what my plans will be on that and how to use it. Um, but yeah, I've tried uh, the different weight and for the exercises I'm going to use, it's, it's surprisingly solid. Definitely a good place to start from. Uh, and uh, the machine does seem fairly robust, um, very solid construction. Uh, and it's put together pretty well. So that's, that's good. Yeah, and uh, with the smoothness and how easy it is to use the different different things and how low you can get, like the lowest of the uh, the, the uh, power rods is five pounds equivalent. So that's good for if I just want the kids to do a little bit of resistance training to move a little bit during this Canadian winter and just kind of move around a little bit. Um, they're not likely to hurt themselves. They're not going to pull something, anything like that, but they'll just move the muscles and get a little bit of a... Uh, blood flow going there and that kind of stuff. Same thing with uh, the wife Heather. Uh, she's got some shoulder uh, issues. This might help and strengthen that shoulder in that area where she's having problems. So help strengthen those muscles. And just, uh, you know, as, as uh, especially women as they're getting older, you want to be doing a bit of resistance training to help maintain the bone density because you don't want to have a lot of problems with your bones as you get older. That, that would suck pretty hard. That's one other thing, nice thing about the pulleys. Now, this, the unit only comes with two hand straps and of course the rowing strap. So it's got two hand grips. Now I thought about uh, going and purchasing, say the lat pull down bar or just a crossbar to be able to use both sets of, you know, arms exactly together instead of each one having their own grip. But in the end, I've decided not to, at least at the beginning, mostly because one thing you don't get with say straight machines is you're not using a lot of your stabilizer muscles when you're doing a lot of the exercises. And of course, when you're using dumbbells or free weights, you know, your whole body gets into a lift because you're, all your stabilizer muscles are helping out, all that kind of stuff. This seems to be a nice balance on the Bowflex 
with the individual grips because your stabilizer muscles need to help get you into the position you need to be. So you are doing a bit more uh, of those stabilizer muscles, which is good. And I think going to the combined bar will help, would lose a little bit of that. So right off the hop, I'm gonna stick with what I got and work this thing as good as I can with just the individual straps. But yeah, overall, so far, I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Of course, it's one day. Uh, check out the Big Goofy Runner channel. This is, of course, on the Big Goofy Runner and Family channel uh, for this unboxing. But check out the Big Goofy Runner channel, and uh, that's where uh, you know I'll be talking about using this more frequently, um, part of my weekly weight loss and exercise vlogs, things like that. So um, yeah, just uh, check that out. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and see you in the next video.